Soul Mask is drawing ever closer to its release with the next public beta currently out for another few days, hopefully upon release of this. I did want to get stuff out a bit earlier, unfortunately have been sick and haven't been able to get it out. This will be largely unedited beginner's guide on how to start out on Soul Mask. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Illybat. I play a lot of survival games and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back it's good to see you let's get started we got our little intro video there have been a couple of changes to the game that will be interesting to see We've got to pick our mask now i do like this mask looks like you've seen some shit we will go with gold and we will change it to that turquoise Ooh. so there are lots of cool benefits that you can have to depending on which mask you choose you do have to unlock them, which we will get to at some point regarding certain crystals and whatnot. So there's a little bit of a choice here. I'm still going to go with this guy because I like the look of it. That's my name. <laughs> Better promo myself. Ooh, sparkle. Didn't get to choose where I spawned. That's okay. I started off with some soup and a torch and some lag. I do need to change the settings down just a smidge. Oh, we'll see how that goes. Oh. My alarm just went off and scared the fuck out of me. So where even am I? Usually upon spawning in, you can have a couple of options where to spawn along here. These are all locations where you can discover if you're absolutely new to the game, you get a couple already kind of unlocked on the map, but you can unlock more mystery markers on the map by beating up certain scout fellows, which we will get to at some point also. The beach is not a horrible place to start off, especially if you're new to the game, because there's not many really tough guys around here. A couple of wild dogs, a couple of people, some people you can tame at a couple of the camps about. There, they've got some outcasts. Here, you can get some easy green crystal for leveling some things up, but again, we'll get to that in a bit. First thing you want to do is just craft and harvest just as much as you possibly can in the beginning, because the more you craft, if you've ever played Ark, um, you have a chance chance to get better crafted stuff so and the more you craft the more xp you get so i could get a journeyman kind of beginner class thing or i could get an epic or legendary kind of version of the thing we also have to unlock some stuff so i need to go t we can unlock some mask features under t which um some of them are pretty beneficial especially the ones for deterring and uh, capturing our followers and then we have our knowledge which we also need because campfires are very handy so we want to hold that learn that probably can't see with my head in the way but that's a campfire under my head now you can spawn at these campfires but they're not very good um so don't rely on that we do want to get to bonfire pretty quickly another goal this game is not meant to be rushed though as someone who's got like 200 or 300 hours in it not actually sure there's a bunch you can definitely potter away at it for a while it's you you're gonna take a while to get all the stuff and that's fine it's enjoyable it's a good part of the game there's a lot of different things to unlock and that goes by pretty quickly. We are still capped to level 30 kind of awareness at the moment. A couple of different leveling systems as well. A few things like that take time to wrap your head around, which is why I'm making guides for you. I figured it out so you all don't have to. So we do want to unlock some of these things like our primitive building. Where am I clicking? Over here. We um, do spend points for some things, some things we do not spend points for. All this beginner thatch stuff doesn't cost any points. So you can go along and learn all of that and still have your points over here, which you'll need later on because they are limited. There are mind wipes, so it's not too bad, but you won't be able to get them till a little bit later unless you're very lucky. So you can get them in some chests, but usually it's from killing some kind of OP boss dudes that you need to for another time. I'm digressing. Same with the tools. They're not going to cost us anything, so we can unlock those beginner stone tools which will get you by for a while. And some of the benches are going to start costing us, though. We will need some of that stuff, but carpentry bench is super important because we're going to need planks, which is the thing below it. And, you know, probably a better box than the one that we have. We can't unlock that yet because some things are locked behind level. You also get a couple of free weapons that you can unlock. Uh, spear is pretty handy. The hammer is all right at this level. It's much better later on. Now, mind you, everything's going to try and kill you. So you're probably going to die, but you do get a loot bag and you can get that back again. We are going to need to pick up some sticks and some rocks now that we've unlocked those tools so we can actually craft them. In the crafting menu, um, it can be a little bit deceiving. Where is my crafting menu? There we are. 
It's gonna look like it's going to require... Never mind, they've changed it. We love that. It's less confusing. We love it when they just straight up improve things. They have made a butt ton of improvements to the game since many of you may have last played it or viewed videos if you didn't get a chance to play it or if you're completely new to the game. They've changed a bunch of stuff because it is not released yet. It's um still changing. This is not a complete depiction of the game that is to be released very soon. Basically touch everything. Even in PvE, if your house is to decay, which um you'll need those bonfires we were talking about earlier, if they go out, your house starts to decay. Even on PvE, if you find someone's decayed house, you can access their stuff. Unless they've changed that too. So that'll be interesting to see. And just generally gathering tends to level you up a fair bit in these early levels. I'm in a fairly safe spot to be able to do so. She gets pretty crazy soon though. I want to be up here so that's sad for me that i'm down here because that is a lot of death between here and there preferably i would have spawned up here i'm gonna lose my breath if i do that i don't want to lose my breath i'm gonna lose my breath anyway no doubt but we also have different proficiencies so i have harvesting proficiency going up by harvesting this stuff you get crafting proficiency from crafting mining from mining etc the more you do or something the better you get at it and can be unlocked and we love an unlocked perk by pressing tab we can go to character and then my head's not covering too much but there is agility under it and then endurance strength physical and perception and you can put levels into those to increase those certain things that are mentioned there and then we also have some and you can see like different stats all here then we have proficiencies all the different stuff Let's move my head for a second. That's a good place for me. We have all of these stats. So you will naturally increase these as you level up, but you can also level them up through these different perks here. As you'll see, you only have level 50 and they can go beyond that. That's where your followers come in handy because you can do all this to them. That will likely be the next video. This will likely already be a very long in-depth video. And I can't be bothered really breaking up into a whole bunch of little ones anyway if you're gonna watch it just watch this whole big thing i'll put the chapters you'll get there and we also have weapon masteries so we can level up a different types of weapons so it actually does kind of matter what you decide to choose there then we have your workers stuff which you can't see because i'm not a worker but you can change your mask with them anyway digress just gonna confuse the people now so once you think you've gathered up enough stuff we can craft our first campfire which will be our respawn spot you can double click and you can also craft more either by dragging or plusing here you'll probably want a box we're gonna want some of this you can see i can drag that around also if i craft this and then i can craft that first just that's a handy little thing that we didn't realize was a thing at first you are uh, cannot cancel the whole thing so it will always craft the last thing so if you're only can't crafting one like oh, if i was to craft this i can't cancel it but it's okay because i was trying to potentially go for a better one so that's excellent but this one is fine and that has better durability the actual weapons themselves have an armor have different buffs the if i could speak the tools themselves only have different durabilities at this point other than saying that you need higher tier tools to hire to mine higher tier metal gosh speaking is hard right now go through and craft up a few of those and your goal is to obviously get to a red or a gold you're probably going to get gold red is preferable that's legendary you just keep crafting them until you get there like that one that'll do i'll get an epic one I'll do. Now our weapon will require some logs and you'll see there's a choice of either logs or hardwood. You do not need both but you can use a combination if you happen to have two hardwood and three logs that will also work. You don't need both so keep that in mind. That's what I was talking about with what they changed before because it used to be stone or flint to craft the tools and it was very confusing step people like how do I find flint. So they changed that which is nice. We can equip our lovely axe hit a tree or a bit of bamboo it'll work different trees give different stuff and it insta collects into your inventory we also have some quests on the side which is quite beneficial to follow because they'll give you some early game xp and teach you a little bit of what's happening you can also skip the guides if you so desire we're gonna do it so we want us to mine some stuff i'll equip my pick and mine some stone 
You can get rare amounts of metal, metal, metal occasionally. Don't mind me, just having a mild stroke. Been playing too much Fallout while I've been sick. Melted my brain. And stone and logs in general are quite good XP at this level. All mining is in survival games, really. Like I was saying, different. I don't want to build. Uh, different trees give you different types of wood, so you'll get hardwood and some rare hardwood and there's different type tiers building and stuff that you need different woods for a bit of inventory management but once you get the hang of it it's actually really awesome especially once you get some followers that it's, it's quite nice we can even get ourselves a monkey but we probably won't do that straight away although they're really handy straight away especially when you are planting a garden which you will need it's like someone's got a well over there i'm just going to keep cutting down some trees because i'm also going to need it for my carpenter's bench I don't want to go too crazy that way though because there's likely bumpy wolves or panthers, wild dogs rather, or panthers. You could also build a hut at this point if it made you feel a little bit safer plus you'll get full at a point as well and you can just go and um, mine a bunch of stuff, pop it in the box and then deal with all of that when you're ready to once you've filled your storage or whatever. Plus you can also get a little bit of a buff from sleeping by a fire in your little house which is nice for leveling up too so that could definitely be beneficial placing your fire in general and lighting it and keeping it lit is super important for respawning and building a little roof over it does help so again preparing some little thatch building parts can be handy for that even if you don't want to build a proper hut a floor a wall and a roof will do you also need to keep your bonfires covered. If it rains, they will go out, your house will decay, and you'll wake up naked or just dead and eaten by an alligator. Gada. Oh, poor guy doesn't realize there's like 30 beast layers and like 30 bloody barbarian camps. Now you gathered up a bunch of stuff, go back into your inventory and see what you can't craft up. I do need that table, but first I'm going to need my weapon because I do like being able to kill things if I have to. You remove stuff from your quick slot. That was pretty average. I'm going to try again. You can also dismantle stuff pretty easily by pressing V and you get back most of the resources. So it's not a waste of time crafting everything. I think you miss out on some of the, the rope you need, especially when it comes to the armor, which we should probably unlock. So we go back to T, go Y, and we then find ourselves armor down here. Now stone weapons, we could also learn, but it does require some other stuff. I quite like the jewel blades. Not gonna lie. So we're gonna need weapon handles, but you can find them rarely from boxes and sometimes from killing dudes about the place. So if I get lucky and happen to get them, it's nice to have it unlocked because you can craft them in your inventory and repair them in your inventory. Although you do need a bench for repairing a lot of other stuff. Keep that in mind. But unlike the tools, the weapons actually do get different benefits from being better crafted. So I'm gonna try that one again. And you can also select what you wanna use. Say if you're trying to save your hardwood, you don't wanna use it. Personally, I don't care right now because all I have is hardwood. You can unselect that and then it will only use the wood that's selected so that's fun and make sure you go through that before you go willy-nilly crafting stuff it will be set like that at every bench that you place i'll show you again when we get there though crafting more now at this level you don't get to see a huge amount of difference between the tiers but it's a decent amount and with the better weapons different stats change it's just a really shitty tier weapon and now craft those unwanted ones and to make armor you're gonna need some linen that one ended up and we're gonna need more thick rope whoa it goes so quickly sometimes i just like to craft like something else just so i can craft these ones and go max <laughs> although you can actually press a button that um max crafts all also if i was to press f it would craft all my available which is one unless i was to cancel that and then press F again, 38. And once you reach level 30 of anything, you can go through and actually take a part of, take benefit of those buffs. But like you see over here, it is slowly growing as you level up, regardless of picking those buffs. It will likely be a while to get the ring because you need to mine a decent amount of stone until you get the rare calcite drop, or you might get lucky and get it straight away. And you can only craft three things at once, so you do have to wait to craft the other bit. I'm just going ahead and crafting a few of everything to see what I luck out with. Apple is pretty decent for now, to be fair. It can be a little bit harder to get above excellent when you're such low crafting level. The more I craft, the better I'm going to get at it. I do get one legendary glove though. That's all right. So I'll see what I can't get that's a little bit better. Oh, 
my god, a gold top. How exciting. If this isn't a right little set of gear, I would preferably like to get to gold or red everything before I moved on out of this area. Specifically with this linen gear, not so much the tools. Again, it's just durability. The weapon well but we'll get something better pretty quickly eating foods will also give you a buff so if i press f10 we'll actually see that i've eaten the broth and i've got some extra hp for 10 minutes you can eat a vegetable and a staple and a meat and a whole bunch of different other buffs all together again we'll get to them when we get to them but i thought i'd mention it now just so you keep an eye out for those buffs if you happen to find them in a box somewhere now me now we must look a tree get a little bit of experience and and we have to craft another stone scythe, which is um, handy because this one got break. So it can be beneficial to do things in order, otherwise you have to do them again or skip it. And I'd prefer to not skip it because I like XP. And to be fair, crafting it is not hurtful. Unless it's not better than fine, but you can actually repair them. So this one was only excellent, which is not better than fine. Fine is better. So I'm actually just going to repair that by pressing continue using that and press V on this one to free up some space. You do have an encumbrance meter, but you can actually apply some of your levels here and take advantage of their buffs. So you click on them and then you press E to add the points in. If you wish to get rid of them, you can cancel it by pressing R. That gets rid of all of them, but you do have to confirm them. You can see your allocated points down here. I have six and I do not have any talents because I'm not a follower or have any special masks. Um, we do have to confirm to confirm Confirm it to move on to the next one. So if you don't want to put all five in that, you can go cancel and go. I just put two for now and space to confirm. Oh, never mind. I just have to click on the next one so I can then so you can apply them all at once. So that's kind of cool. We like that. You just have to click on the next one. I too am discovering a few certain changes that they have made along the way. So that's fun. Hopefully all improvements. I dare say they are because they are very dedicated dev team. I'm going to go ahead and make that little bit of mouse situation so I can potentially have a sit down or a snooze. I don't think I can make a bed yet. You can also pre-craft some of these benches. They may be a little bit heavier than some of the materials on occasion, but usually it's a bit lighter. Yeah, I cannot make my bed until I get some planks, which is not too hard to get and highly advisable. You can pick up undamaged stuff. So if it hasn't started to decay and you've got a bonfire, you'll be right. And you can unlock a bonfire at strength awareness five. So we can actually do that and anything we happen to place won't decay until we've found our desired location. You can have about six camp um, bonfires, I believe, and unlimited campfires, but campfires will decay pretty quickly by themselves. Our next quest is to scythe some plants. Now that we've got that, get a little bit of experience. Experience. We're gonna open our map. Get that bit of experience. Now all this fog of war is gonna leave the more of these scouts here that you kill. Now uh, you sometimes see them, sometimes don't. Sometimes you'll discover the camp and it'll be like, hey, there's a scout here. That's another reason why I do want to work my way up to this kind of area. I might die a lot too. Let me refresh myself at their well again. Can make water skins, which is very handy. But it will require you to kill some things first and get some beast hide. If you're getting annoyed at inventory being all crazy. Up here you can um, in fact sort your inventory. It's not the hugest amount but it sorts it and you can also look through here and find only those items. I'm going to spend some of the night time actually cutting down some trees so I can uh, craft my bed in that and sleep through maybe the next night time. You don't actually pass the night by sleeping but it does take a long time to regen your sleepingness meter. You will eventually get followers that you can assign to do all of this but it's a little bit tedious at first. But again no need to rush it. Take your time have fun. You will get to followers eventually, probably within your first few hours of playing, maybe your first few days, depending on whether you really like to do things yourself or get stuff to micromanage and do it for you. Because there's a lot of micromanaging when it comes to the followers and um, using them efficiently, for sure. But you can also then swap masks with them and it's quite fun and you can get around as them and they can have some awesome perks. Fix up my little axe there. See if I have enough to craft. I can't put this table, I do. I only want one. Oh, we'll need a tennis rack. Don't have anything that is put in a butcher's table currently. But like I said, all of this stuff you can eventually pick up. You can also put down a grass mat and sit on it and get a little bit back of your... What is it? Your morale. So sleeping or sitting in comfortable things will regenerate that and you'll 
big bit about life. Another great thing about this game is the life perception, which is the next quest. We can detect stuff like enemies and eventually scan the enemies for their stats. As we level up that through our mask meetup, we need to raid some temples and get some crystals for that. It's really handy because you just go around smashing that and you eventually do have to regen that um, percolator meter by eating some certain other crystals. It's pretty easy and it becomes the way of life, especially with the, the amount of things that want to make you in this game. While we're at it, we might as well make a bonfire. I can always move it or mantle it. Now, when you place a camp bonfire, specifically campfires are fine most of the time, you will get a dude come visit you and they may attack you if you're in a too higher level area for your campfires status because you can upgrade that the higher level you go in the game. So do be warned, don't build to anywhere too crazy. You can place this and now then we have to place, oh it's already started on fire, that's nice. We can place some stuff in there but we can also set the type of wood we want. And then this guy is here so we want him to join us because that'd be cool. So they're our first follower. We do have to put some food on them. Usually you have to knock these guys out and put the soups on them, the broth, but you get a free one most of the time. Sometimes if you build somewhere crazy, they're just gonna come and attack you. They might still come and attack me. My durability of this went down so quickly, but is now going back up. So you definitely place your campfire first. You can also get these guys to maintain your campfire. Now let's kill a thing or miss completely. We'll keep missing. Cool. Okay, got that one. So they will hear you um, and run away as well. You can save some data for some various other stuff and then get your butchering knife and hack them up and obtain some meat. And also capture the babies and get some turkeys at your own base. Fun. And now we've got a vagabond. We can check him out. He's got a luminous waist lamp. That's kind of cool. You can also steal their gear, but it will eventually break. He also comes with some stuff. Oh, I want yeah, we have two lamps. That's sick. Now I have a lamp. You can also hold onto them and then get other stuff so I can then view his work and assign him to different tasks here so I can then get him to gather some things or maintain the campfire or whatnot. They'll have different stats depending. So this guy, he's all right. What's he good at? He'll probably do a ride in alchemy. He can get decently high levels in kilns and most things really. So if he doesn't die, he'll be all right. So say I want him to upkeep my campfire and just the camp in general. He'll put stuff from boxes or his inventory, their inventory, her inventory, I think it was a girl, into the campfire to maintain its goingness. And if it um, starts to decay or get attacked by anything, they'll fix it all up too, providing there are materials. You can select locations like so, but I, and then you go to confirm, you can also find them now. Uh, we can also create customized markers, which is handy for us to see where we're going, but you can also assign your followers there. So say I want him to go get trees here. I'll call this tree. Uh, we'll make it green to help and we'll make it a leaf. Now we've got tree here. I can put an ax on this guy. Um, can we select him? Just there. Providing that they don't go too far because they can get attacked and not always look after themselves necessarily. You can put some of your spare armor you potentially still have on them can help them out. Maybe a better weapon. Although that's three, three points of XP. And we can also deploy them and they'll follow you around. That's quite fun. And then we can also eventually swap positions with them once we unlock some mask settings. So we'll go back into tribes mate work. I'm gonna get him to go get some trees. And I actually want wild collection. I want a tree. And we're logging. And we want about 500. They'll stop eventually. And then they'll put it in a nearby storage box. And then they'll put throw away tools with it. There's a couple of settings to find craft things. Press confirm. Oh, or be there. Press confirm. Add that. And you can also change that about like so. And they'll actually go do it. I should place the crafting box and then you can actually assign the crafting boxes and rename them to just pop everything in there until it's full. Literally I'm playing too much full out, keep pressing E. But up here we can rename, nope that's just a log, down here we can rename. And then we can call this wood box and we can make it so we can set the storage type and they'll only accept plants and materials and wood and stuff in there and then you can fine tune it even more so you can only have actual hardwood in there or whatever. Press L again to set that storage. It also makes it quite handy when you want to 
deposit everything because then I can also go G and that'll deposit all of that stuff. The, thrall, the followers will also pull stuff out of boxes when you have benches around which is pretty handy. Oh, our campfire's gone out so we do need to add some stuff to it. You can set what's acceptable in here. I it over there. Enable. Then we should craft our meetup. Put it in our, the inventory. Craft all that. We can also craft some crickets although you can use them for harvesting gathering other stuff. Might as well make some noms for now because they're a different qualification. Well they're both the same qualification of buff class but now you will see your barbarian on the map or whether they have to be a vagabond at this current time. Getting about. You can track them a little bit. Now for them to deposit stuff we need to do a little bit more fine tuning. So we go back into their tasks which you can also access from your inventory remotely as long as you're in a certain distance to them. We're also going to add sticks to here but we are going to add also wood and some other things for item storage. Otherwise they're just going to get full. We select our storage box and we press um, and then we also want to copy this so it's going to make it a lot easier. So all we do is press C a few times on this and we'll just go through and change the fine details. Now we have all of the byproducts of them gathering logs. They'll also go put all of that away. And I want to put this down the bottom. But eventually they'll actually start putting stuff away but I want them to put stuff away before they get too full. So we're going to put that. Yeah, oh mushrooms, they're good for the getting and occasionally you can find some other cool things around the trees. Mostly mushrooms. I don't need to do that. And my campfire is a bit hard when it's flat. A person in a bush. I'll use that well while I'm nearby. Now we can see with the 60 hardwood it's going to go for at least seven hours but I will top that up a lot more. Well actually this guy is going to do that eventually. Now this isn't too full yet but it will start getting full and I haven't put premium hardwood in there so if he is to gather any of that they may end up getting full. You can also place boxes much closer to their location to make it a bit more efficient because you can also relocate fairly easily without emptying anything. So I'm going to relocate it onto the ground so he can definitely find it but once you've done that you will need to go back into their inventory. Never mind they fix that before when you'd move the box it would um pick everything out. Now in theory they're actually putting stuff in there. Oh I'm so silly. It's been a minute. It's crafting. It's not decaying. Now with our very minimal logs because our person's are not very efficient yet but they will become well more efficient so don't worry about that. But yeah things take a moment to craft in the game so <laughs> It was alarming at first. Then I can craft here and if I wish to get the thrall to pull stuff I can assign them by appointing a caregiver. They will maintain this pen. They will in fact pull stuff if I press D. I can add to planned queue and then he'll go out and get the stuff out of the boxes. Craft up a few of that. I'm gonna need some handles too. Whoa and you can craft all of them if you like. You can also get your follower to place stuff directly into the carpenter's bench. So they're taking a little break and it's also beneficial to um, help them out there with that break. They're adding things, things that they might like, like a bed or a seat. You can eventually get them a table that you can put food in so they'll eat some food. I will have to make a skinning knife, a water skin. I need to skin some more things. Skinning knives on the brain. Oop. Who's off again? They also get better at life the um, more powerful you are. They respect you more. But at the moment it's also repairing things. It's just helping out the auto repair I guess. It's good levels to stand and uh, craft stuff but you can't do other things while you're crafting at benches which is also why it's handy to have the followers do it for you. Now if they're off running around and it's hard to find them you can press J if I could craft a clan but this is apparently every single person who's ever played on the server. I go over here and go my tribe somewhere. I think I actually have to create a tribe first. No clan, here we go. And then I can find my follower down here, Vagabond. I get some stats. I can also click on me. Nope, 
can't click on me, can only click on Vagabond. You can see what they're up to, but you can also mark them, pause their work, deploy them, dismiss them, do not dismiss them, get them to do a few things, you can rename them all from here. But if you are close by and you press tab over in this corner here, you can actually scroll between all you and your tribe mates over here to work and we're actually going to go over here and we're going to repeat this duplicate and we're also going to duplicate it again you can also just um reset it i'm pretty sure too but we're going to set this one to actually just be by the one file because that's a bit better and confirm that and we're going to move it to the top and you can then delete these if you so desire so that's gone you can also get a bit of an idea of what they've actually been cutting down and so far not a great deal of actual log unfortunately but they will get better at that like i said and the better tool you have the more chance you have of that happening now the tribesmen will go to put this stuff away in a box if you have an unmarked box or a dedicated stuff to put this material in and it will leave the bench and that can be annoying so you can take this over here and uh they won't do that which is handy especially when you need to make something to make something not so much this bench but other benches like the armory bench where you need to make a predecessing thing and they go pop it away or the smelter and you're like um no and then they waste time going to go get it again because they need it really guys but because he's out crafting at the moment and we're not he's out gathering rather we're going to be crafting because we're not doing anything else so you can press this space bar and actually operate it yourself we do have some temperatures going up which won't affect us too much at the moment in this temperate environment but it will later affect some growing of crops and things you can do a few things while you're in your inventory like eat usually i can eat there we are and there are certain foods that give buffs so it's definitely beneficial how many wood did i need for my bed again i completely forgot already 10 planks did not make 10 i think i made not that many sometimes you have a chance to get extra when you're crafting that can happen now do you keep in mind if you have a multiple multiple tribesmen only one can be crafting at a bench at a time or assigned to a bench at a time so do try to get your best one by looking under here so if it's wood and stone that i'm assigning to it's highlighted so i can go oh, well it'd be beneficial to have one that has higher potential chances of that like a 90 as i'd be able to unlock some of those perks over there I just want to move my wall around and I can retrieve it. I can also straight upgrade it as well, which is handy. Did I not confirm that? I'm going to return it into my inventory so I can then move it about. If I dismantle it, it's going to dismantle it. I can then change and have some windows or some doors. I have a door here. I've already ran out of walls. Now you will come into building collisions, but that's pretty easily solved by just destroying the stuff in the vicinity stuff will respawn pretty close to your base although i'll have to see how close it is in some of the updates now, i do believe this will keep your fire covered but we will see we will see later and i will put a marker here saying somewhere on the screen if this is not good enough if it is good enough you won't see that because eventually i'd like to have a little second floor I probably won't stay here. It's not the most ideal spot, but it's also not the worst, to be fair, just for a little gathering, party out, half asleep, still sick, making a beginning guide video because you all don't really need to see me running to crazy areas where you're going to die instantly and me min-maxing stuff. That's not going to be beneficial. So I probably will end up staying here for at least until I get some wood stuff. And then I'll leave this hut here and I can eventually teleport between my fireplaces, not with my stuff, but you can put a whole inventory full of axes on them and they won't just stop because every now and then you will need to replenish that for them. It can't place stuff too close to the actual campfire itself. It's beneficial to build a little thing a little bit bigger than this. So I'll expand it slightly, but again, we'll have that second floor. Although these guys best at using complex structures sometimes but i did hear that they have fixed that we can make those mushrooms we collected a little bit ago into roasted mushrooms and get a different food buff also because they're a fruit and vegetable buff oh and i did get distracted earlier with um just adhd life but we can set acceptable fuels by holding onto the fire and then they're not gonna put nonsense in there that you don't want them to i will need to gather a few more things just endlessly Oh, not what I wanted. These tools still do look a little bit similar. I wouldn't mind the scythe having a bit more of a hook on it. I tend to get confused. Are um, my harvesting proficiency is already almost 30, so already. My followers is horrible at getting logs currently, but as soon as I make a burn anything, it'll be way better. 
then I can make a stern weapon of me soon, and that'll enable me a way better killing of dogs, which will get me the bone from the leather. Does the Tokyo's don't drop a huge amount of leather, mostly just me? But yeah, essentially just keep putting away at some of those side quests, getting that XP, trying to get up to the first tier of being able to upgrade yourself in the proficiencies, as that will help you gather more things potentially. A few different options. And keep checking your follower because they'll have different perks that you can level up to. They haven't reached anything yet, but if I was to assign them on a table, like if I wanted to go take a break or just jump off the game, they'll continue working while I'm gone. So I can assign them to work and as long as there's work there for them to be done, they shall do it. And I'll come back to resources, which is something we incredibly love about this game. And if you get yourself up a nice little army, especially if they happen to have some cool little perks, I can't see any perks right now, but usually you can see a whole bunch of fun things on them and they also get these types of perks and they'll get better and level up more and they'll get even better of these perks the more they level up and if i was just to have them afk well while i was afk and they'll work on a bench they'll just end up being well higher level that's also advisable if you are to just go do anything else in life pee get a drink set yourself up on a bench i right now should be crafting i'm not i'm talking do as they say not as i do and actually out harvesting so Eventually you will get full, but again, you can sort there and you can drop some stuff and whatever, or you just walk very slowly back to your base. I don't think you get so full that you stop, but you ain't quick, so keep that in mind. You'll later get mounts, especially the llama, which help immensely with carrying stuff because they have much bigger inventories and carry weight than you. So don't worry about going particularly metal mining to great deals and lugging it all back to your base. Build a little outpost if you can, if you've got spare fires, which you should. Wait until you get a llama and then go pick it up that way. Even an alpaca. Alpacas are super easy because you can go to most of the camps. Like there's this barbaric barracks that has a couple of them, but I personally like to go up to this one up here. I find it a little bit easier. You can sneak in there and get a pretty easy llama. So it might be over here. Just closer to here. Now, while you're crafting in a bench, you can also craft some stuff in your inventory. You can multitask multitasking. Where's that bed at, man? Moving on up in the world. That banging is not quiet though. Now if you ever want to just find what bench a recipe is crafted in, if it's not handcrafted, you can actually click here and find all the different benches or all the different recipes that it would be. So that's pretty handy. Oh, a turkey wandered into my house. Ah, oh, and I missed. Ah, didn't miss. Sometimes it drags it back towards you too, which is fun. Let's deposit some of this stuff in here so I can actually move that big grand if I can't hit this guy. There we have. Um, I have a light. Have I used light doing anything? Oh, the tiniest bit of light. That's okay because we can press Q and locate our bodies. Which is another fun thing is being able to do stuff at night. If I was to craft a trap, I could potentially trap that little baby. Different animals prefer to be trapped by different foods, more specifically. I can use nuts and berries if I harvest, uh, capture them. Don't mind my strange little bits. And you should be crafting up as much of this as you can from the raw, raw resources, tongue twister, into the semi-raw resources here, because you'll use a lot more of this stuff than you will the raw resources. Plus, it's constantly getting you XP for your different various mass levels, your experience level, and all your different proficiency levels. As a bonus tip, if you've made it all the way this far, press the plus button or equals. It's a plus and equals or an auto run. Hands free. Terrible example, running into a thing. Do join me again on the next episode of Soul Mask Beginner's Guide as we venture a bit more into that actual mask technology and leveling up some of these things, going and killing some beasties and getting some crystals, that whole adventure. We'll be adding a bit to our house here and there, but You've gotten the basic lowdown on how to utilize this first follower if you happen to get them. We may even tame some stuff next episode. It'll definitely be within the next two episodes because it's great to get them as soon as you can. Even if they're shitty ones, they're going to help you. Like I said, 
when you go to sleep or get off the game or anything like that, they're still going to be doing things and you'll come back with a whole bunch of stuff, especially if you get good at that micromanaging. Do you have those beginner tips that'll at least start getting you on your way? Like I said, stick around for that next episode. If you're not already, consider subscribing, smash that like button if you liked the video. Until next time, I hope you have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever you may, whatever it may be, wherever you may be, have a good one. I need to go because I can't speak anymore. But have fun. Love you all.